Koopman's theorem. Everyone has probably heard of the Koopman's theorem, but I, w I would like to draw your attention to the name here. Uh, for example, it's commonly misspelled in even in famous computational chemistry books as the following. And note that this is wrong. Okay, so another fact that's little known about uh, Koopmans. Let's have a little test. Um, Koopmans was awarded a Nobel Prize for his contributions to the field of. Okay, I'll give you five seconds to think about it. Okay, so the correct answer is probably you will be surprised economics. It's a joint winner with Leonid Kantorovich in 1975. Okay, after these uh, fun facts about Koopmans, let's look at uh, something more scientific. What I have here is the Hartree-Fock energy for n electrons. Here's your um, core Hamiltonian, here's the Coulomb and exchange integrals, and the potential. Now, Let's let's say I would like to remove an electron from orbital which I had numbered with k. So here's how I denote it. Here's the same equation as here. However, this time I have one less electron. And if I take the difference between this equation and this equation here, I, I have written it down here you will end up with epsilon k which is actually um, the energy of orbital k. This is uh, the essence of Koopman's theorem which is often abbreviated as kt. And let's formally state it. The energy of an electron in orbital k is equal to the energy required to remove the electron to give the corresponding ion. There are things to be cautious about when using uh, Koopman's theorem and here's the first one. It's a static approach which means orbitals of the ion are the same as in the unionized state uh, which means they are frozen because we haven't done a, a separate Hartree-Fock calculation on on the ion. So this is a bad approximation sometimes if there is considerable orbital re relaxation once you kick out the electron. And what this will give you is it will give you an ionization potential which is too large. Another issue is that electron correlation is neglected and um, the, this is usually less of a problem because electron correlation is more important for the unionized state because simply because it has more electrons so these two effects here usually cancel out to give some meaningful value for the ionization potential okay, let's look at an example um, this is water this is a calculation on the water molecule with um, the coupled cluster method and the spaces set. So here I have uh, the molecular orbitals, the energies of these orbitals. Here are the occupied ones and here are the virtual or unoccupied molecular orbitals. Let's, um, let's apply the Koopman's theorem here. What the theorem says is that energy of the HOMO, that is the highest occupied molecular orbital shown here in orange of course uh, with the correct sign will be the ionization potential because removing an electron from the highest occupied molecular orbital would correspond to ionization let's forget about science here because there are different conventions and let's just use the word bound or unbound from now on so again if I apply the Koopman's theorem to this case I will obtain ionization potential 0 0.505 hard trees which means the electron is bound by this much and I know that it's bound because um, the energy is negative so 
if I convert this um, energy from hard trees to EVs, which makes a little bit more sense for physical chemists, I obtain 13.7 electron volts. This would be the ionization potential at Koopman's theorem level. And if we compare it with experiment, uh, here is a number that I got from um, this database here. We can see that this is a reasonable number and of course it's a little bit higher than what what uh, we expected but we know what the reason for that is from the previous slide now uh, you can think about if I can apply this to a case where I kick out an electron how about if I add an electron to the lowest energy virtual orbital which is our LUMO what should I get if I do that I should get the electron affinity and let's look at an example. Uh, this is again our famous water coupled cluster example. Here are the molecular orbitals, uh, the energies, and here are here is the LUMO. Its its energy is positive, which means if I put an electron here, it will be unbound, and when I put the electron the energy of this orbital should give me the Koopman's theorem um, electron affinity. Again, we should be careful about our sign convention. So here's what I just said. The electron is unbound by 0 0.142 hard trees, uh, which means this is the Koopman's theorem level electron affinity. Here, however, we run into some pro problems when calculating the electron affinity and these problems are usually uh, more severe compared to the case where we were kicking out the electron and, le and let's see why so in in our case here where we calculate electron affinity the errors due to the static approach that I mentioned before and the lack of electron correlation that I again mentioned before should add up that means these two errors add up, so, so we get a larger error. Remember that we had a cancellation of errors in the case where we were calculating ionization potentials. Another problem with this approach is that eigenvalues of occupied orbitals are well defined and they converge to some number as you increase your, uh, the size of your basis set. However, eigenvalues of the unoccupied orbitals are not so well defined and um, usually the lowest unoccupied orbital converges to zero and let's have a look at an example again the water uh, monomer case here are in black the occupied orbital energies with the augmented CCPVTZ basis set compared to the numbers in orange which are obtained from the CCPVTZ basis set. So again the uh, numbers in black are from the augmented basis set which means it's larger one it has more diffuse functions. Okay so y these were the occupied and these are the virtual orbitals. One thing that we can immediately notice that uh, the difference in orbital energies obtained with these two basis sets for, for the occupied orbitals is much smaller compared to the difference in energies com obtained with the two basis sets for the virtual orbitals. Let's say here we have usually a difference in the second or the third digit while here we have difference either in the first or the second digit. So this illustrates the statement um, here, these two statements.